gave up. Magic never quits. That's between her and her brother. Oh, she got it. <laughs> Butterfly said, no. Hey, girl. You got it, mom. T-Bone has stole it. I'm not sure what butterfly is, but T-Bone and Magic are doing it. Oh, they can't spread it now. I know we went on the other side of that tree. stuff like that but apparently it broke off and that's what you want to do like I predicted I just started first the two bones right there off I can see you guys pretty clearly it's just that fine little writing that I can't see uh, but anyway reflecting back on that video we just saw selecting a puppy that's where it begins making the wrong choice sometime can be a long long road at the end of the day we never know it's it's gambling we're taking a chance we have no idea if we knew the future this would be so much easier but at the end of the day, what we're supposed to do in the process of looking for 
you know, a beagle or any type of dog that you're looking to hunt with is to do your research. And if you do your research, um, you may not be so overwhelmed if you don't get what you assume to be getting. Know the breeder, get some references. You know, at the end of the day, it's sad, but a lot of people are in, in this business for the profit that they make off of puppies. It's not to better the breed. It's not to make sure someone gets a very, very good dog. Um, all they want to do is sell you a dog. And at the end of the day, um, everyone that, I, that I've ever talked with that has been doing this for a long time have gone through it. We have purchased dogs from individuals that um, told us lies, overcharged us, and so on and so forth. But make a long story short, do your homework before you purchase. Uh, <clears throat> know what type of terrain you will be hunting. Every dog is not suitable for every type of terrain. You have to know before going into something, really understand that uh, there are different style beagles. You have the ones that's that's bred to run big. And, and when I say that, I mean open land dogs, uh, primarily, you know, in the northern states, um, the terrain up there is open. Um, down here in the south where I am, it's very, very thick. We have briars on top of briars. So at the end of the day, understand where you are and understand that you may be in a situation where that 15 inch beagle just won't get the job done. It won't be effective, won't be efficient in that type of terrain. So understand that. Uh, also, as an individual, you have a choice to make. You have to decide, do I want a very, very fast dog or do I want a medium speed dog or do I want a slow dog? Um, at the end of the day, all of them get the job done. They just do it differently. So I would advise you guys that's in the market for, for beagles to really, really do your homework. I cannot express that enough. And I'm saying that because I call myself a guy that does his homework, but I didn't do it enough at times when I made some purchases. So you can never not overdo it. You can you can go you want to know more than enough going into it, because if you make the wrong selection, it can be three years down the line before you realize that, you know, I should not have done this. I should not have purchased this dog. I should have went with this dog or this breed of dog opposed to that breed of dog. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, looking back on that video, I was so thankful that out of those three puppies, all three of them are keepers. And when I say that, um, we didn't see Butterfly, but I caught up with her later and she was solo in a rabbit by herself. Um, at an early young age like that, sometimes they don't all come together. Um, she was doing her own thing. T-Bone and Magic, they were running their rabbit. Um, like I predicted earlier, based on the red rag test, uh, Magic really started, and she is really a nice young female. T-Bone is right there. He is right there. Um, I know for a fact those two dogs are going to be dogs. Um, as as wise, likewise as uh, Butterfly. So, what comes after that? If you could tell in that video, I did not have any type of shock collar on those dogs. I want a dog to be a dog. I want a puppy to be a puppy. So at the end of the day, um, have you heard the scenario of um, let a child be a child? Yeah, I believe in that as well. So let a puppy be a puppy. But I have one thing that I kind of differ from most people. My time span is not as long. So I'm not going to baby a puppy for a year. I'm going to throw them in the fire, but 
you know, the first few times out really concentrating on trying to learn what a rabbit is and how to run a rabbit. I'm not worried about correcting that behavior as far as, you know, obedience that comes right after this stage that they've just gone through. Been in a training pen, now they understand a rabbit. Now the next thing is to put a collar on, just a regular collar on when they're in their kennels. But make sure you put them separately because puppies have a tendency to chew each other's collar. So you put that on, they'll get accustomed to something around their neck. Then as I start taking them out from the initial training that they just received going forward, there will be a collar on them. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, I have one here. This is a Gorman TT15 Mini. This is preferred for beagles. The Mini means preferred for beagles. Basically, it is a smaller collar. They have TT15s and they also have the Minis. Uh, a lot of guys go out and purchase collars, but they end up getting the regular TT15s, which are more suitable for bigger hounds. So make sure if you were to get a you know a Garmin product, Apple product, uh, make sure that you get the the minis if you're running beagles. Uh, but how it is done? This is what we do um, here at Pearson's Action Pack Kennel. Uh, when I put the collar on, and I'm taking them out right after they had their initial training, I will call them when that day's hunt is over or when that tr training session is over, typically one, two hours, um, I'll call. And most puppies that's really high sprung, they will not come in. They're still hunting. Um, now there's a whole nother group of puppies out there that's still gonna be puppies and they, they never even left you talking about bringing them back in. They never left, they just right there. Um, but th they should be weaned out in the stage prior, you know, seeing if they're keepers or you should let them go or, you know, let someone have them as a pet. Uh, so at the end of the day, once you realize they're keepers, just um, as you're calling them, I always use a vocal command first, our call, 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 call. And I'll give that a minute or so. Because I have a tracking unit, if I see that they're not advancing towards me, that's when I'll start toning. So I'm calling and toning. I'll do that two or three minutes, four minutes. Toning, calling, toning, calling. If I'm not getting any response, then I start shocking them lightly. Uh, I've had dogs that come in when you shock them lightly they get the message and then I've had you know puppies to not understand you know what's going on they just stop and start looking around like what is this shocking me but at the end of the day once they realize that that shock there's a way to not get shocked and that's to come to me eventually they will do that and then they'll see that you know I'm not getting shocked anymore so they are always associated the call, the come in call, the tone, and the shock. They associate those three things. Now it gets to a point where you won't have to even shock them anymore. Just the tone will tell them, okay, I need to stop what I'm doing and go back to my master. So at the end of the day, there's a procedure, there's a step, there's a process in which you utilize these callers. Because if you just get a collar and start off just shocking them for every little thing that they do wrong, you're going to have a dog that's, that's going to be too afraid to do anything. So at the end of the day, we're going to cut this short because I can sit here and talk all day about these dogs, um, training them and uh, <clears throat> getting them to the point that they are solid rabbit dogs. But we're going to continue this, like I said, going forward. Um, and like I said, if, if, if there are any questions that anyone have, 
just leave it for me and um, I'll try to get back to it and address it. Actually, I had a gentleman that asked me about how to incorporate these collars on puppies. So hopefully I answered your question, sir. And um, hopefully I helped a bunch of you guys out there that's considering going out to get a collar.